Expect a total mobilization on our part. Remember Anonymous? The mysterious anti-establishment group that hacks into and shuts down the websites of churches, corporations, and governments. We are now privy to many of Stephen Harper's most cherished secrets. Well now, Anonymous is directing its venom toward ISIS. The neutralization of terrorists. Operation ISIS actually began after the Charlie Hebdo massacre. As for ISIS, we will hunt you. As of today, Operation Paris claims it has flagged about 20,000 Twitter and YouTube accounts that the companies then make disappear. Social media is a crucial tool for ISIS, where it posts its propaganda, even those ghastly videos, raising money and enticing new recruits. But here's where Anonymous gets really controversial. It doesn't just shut down accounts, it's known to publish personal information about the people it targets. It's called doxing, a 21st century way of outing someone for their activities online. We will not forgive. In this case, Anonymous has been more cautious, passing on information about people they suspect have a connection to ISIS to the media for them to verify and reveal. Still, there are concerns innocent people could be targeted. Gabrielle Coleman, so this can be tricky. Last June, Anonymous hacked into Canadian government websites to protest the anti-terrorism bill, right. uh, C-51, as an attack on civil liberties. But if Anonymous risks exposing innocent people, isn't that an attack on civil liberties? No, it is. And when they're in a kind of experimental mode like that, um, you know, these problems can really um, cause exactly problems. And, and, and social media is only um, something that amplifies these problems, right? And even independent of Anonymous, we actually saw this with a young man, a Sikh man, who was photoshopped as being a terrorist. And this had nothing to do with Anonymous, but it was picked up by the media. And also, tens of thousands of Twitter accounts were retweeting this. So we live in an age where bad information uh, can really have the ability to circulate so fast and so quickly that it can really um, hurt a targeted person when that information is false. It seems that since the Paris attacks that some people are now open to relying not just on governments or militaries to retaliate. Has the mood changed? It's been interesting to watch as someone who studied uh, Anonymous for so many years because they're kind of inherently controversial. They like to stir the pot of controversy themselves. Uh, but this is one instance where a lot of people are paying attention and, and seem to be intrigued or ex excited and um, less judgmental. I think because, you know, terrorism uh, is so violent, there's loss of life, and so people get excited by anyone who's sort of trying to fight it, even though it may be, you know, not necessarily productive and even slightly counterproductive as well. You've seen some of these ISIS, ISIS accounts online. What's the appeal? The ISIS accounts? Yeah. Well, many of them are in Arabic, so I don't speak that, so I'm not sure, but you know, I've read quite a bit about um, the use of online media by ISIS, and apparently uh, they're really good at tapping into youth sentiment, uh, portraying themselves as revolutionary. Um, there's a kind of sexiness to what they do. And so in many ways, um, they're tapping into the, the present, the contemporary. Yes, they reach a different population. They're not necessarily trying to go for every young person in, in Paris. But nevertheless, um, the messages are ones that are about revolution and excitement in a, a different world and a different life. And these are absolutely relayed uh, on Twitter and their videos as well. So do you think that ISIS is scared? by the anonymous threat? You know, they, they did send out a kind of communique uh, where they, on the one hand, called anonymous idiots, uh, literally. And on the other hand, they also gave a little bit of advice, like, don't click on suspicious links, right? And so on the one hand, I don't think that they're inherently uh, threatened. Uh, but nevertheless, it is a nuisance. And I think that one of the biggest threats that can come from groups like Anonymous or GoSec is if their Bitcoin reserves, this is a cryptocurrency of which 
um, they have you know, quite a bit of money, if those are hit and that money is taken, um, that can be a, a bigger blow to their actual resources. So I bet they are trying to absolutely avoid that. Tell me more about that. That's interesting. Well, it's uh, a little bit or a lot more difficult to uh, steal someone's Bitcoin wallet than it is to, you know, obviously flag a Twitter account or uh, take down a website. So it takes a lot more skill. But nevertheless, this is where the smaller hacker group of, um, you know, a small team made up of people who are experts and who are willing to work on this problem over the long term, you know, they might be able to do it. And so in that sense, I do think it's a, you know, at least theoretically a real threat. How serious a threat could that be, do you think, finances? Um, people have raised it on the chat channels. Uh, they've discussed it. It's not part of the official plan of action, which they publish. But certainly for GOSEC, they have uh, talked about it. And um, it does seem like it would be something that would be a tactic that they would absolutely pursue. So out of all of this, what's most interesting to you? Well, uh, in, in this case, what's interesting to me is actually the participants who are attracted to this operation, which is now called Op Paris. My sense is that on the one hand, you have long-term people anonymous who are willing to provide infrastructure. Uh, but on the other hand, it's attracted a new type of population. There are those geeks and hackers who, who come from the military world um, or those who support the military. And I suspect that they are participating in greater numbers in an operation like this. And, and they normally wouldn't touch anonymous, right? And then finally, I also noticed that there were uh, people logging in from places like Syria saying, I'm from Syria. ISIS is, you know, causing total harm here. How can we help? And so it really is a weird motley crew, as is usually the case with Anonymous's operations, but especially so with this one. So interesting. Gabriella Coleman, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you're welcome.